Based on the book, The Bluest Eye is opening, will be in Santa Monica. So first, I'd like to welcome Shamika Franklin in the studio. Shamika, thank you thank so you. very much. And you're going to be playing one of the lead characters, Mrs. Breedlove. We'll hear a little about that in, in a minute. Minute. I would also like to welcome uh, Jonette Kent. You're playing Mama. Yes, I am. Good morning. Okay, good morning, Mama. <laughs> All righty. And also with us, uh, Steve Cisneros, who is the uh, founded the Phantom Projects, and he's producing and artistic director uh, of the outfit where putting putting this play on. So, uh, Steve, let's just start with you very very quickly. Sure. Um, why and why this particular piece now? The message is timeless. I don't think any, you know, if it was 10 years ago or 20 years from now, I think someone's going to relate to the topic we brought into this program. And Toni Morrison, just a brilliant, beautiful writer, of course, and this play adaptation sticks to the book so truly and brings across the themes so, so well that audiences were going to connect with this on every level, regardless of their age, their race, their background. This book and the play just speak to so many individuals. And I think there's a with her 80th birthday coming up, and it's actually our 15th anniversary as a company, I can't imagine a better play to bring to the forefront than this one. And it's not been done very often. It's a fairly new play adaptation of the book. So we're very pleased to be one of the first ones to do it in Southern California. That's right. And Shamika, tell us, for people who haven't read the book yet, yes. <laughs> I'm sure they will now, though, and come out and see the play, um, just quickly tell us, uh, you know, a little, without giving anything away, a bit about the story. I mean, the story is basically based on Pakola. She's an 11-year-old girl, um, and she's based, like, in the 1940s. Of course, that was a time with a lot of racial turbulence, and she really wants blue eyes. Oh, my. And she's a young black girl. Yeah, she's a young black girl, and she, not, she wants nothing more than to have blue eyes. So it's basically based on her life and her story and the things that happened to her to drive her to this point. Right. And uh, Jeanette Kenton and playing Mama, I mean, I know you're acting, but did you, uh, you know, did you find in getting into the role that there was so much, unfortunately, today that is still real, having to do with self-esteem and, and young, uh, you know, black girls feeling like they need to be lighter skinned and not good about themselves and their hair just isn't right and all that sort of thing? That was actually one of the things that drew me to this particular piece. I know that growing up myself, we always want something other than what we have and unfortunately for so many young people we feel that we want to be or look like something else that's the status quo and not embrace who you are as you are and this really talks to when you decide to want something else and not embrace you what could possibly happen to you and you are beautiful as you come absolutely Absolutely, and, and up against so much. Well, for people out there, they're going to be a couple of lucky people um, who are going to win some tickets to go see this play, The Bluest Eye. If you call us at 818-985-5735, we want to thank all of you, our listeners here at Sojourner Truth. We'd like to offer you these giveaways, um, the brand new play, The Phantom Projects Theater Group. They're celebrating their 15th anniversary season and they'll be bringing you Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye to Los Angeles, 818-985-5735. Now, we only have two lucky winners. You're going to get a pair of tickets to go see this play. Only two lucky winners, so you need to get on the hooter right now, 818-985-5735, and uh, we're going to have two uh, lucky winners here. And what date um, will the winners be able to see the, Saturday, the play? Saturday, April 16th is the winners. Uh, they'll have it that day, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Saturday, April 16th. 16th. And that You heard it from Steve uh, Cisnero. I'll say one eight nine eight five five seven three five and and if you don't get to win, you know, um, you know, you may just want to, you know, check this out anyway. You know, um, getting back to you, um, Shamika, for for a moment, you're up against so much. I mean, I have a daughter, and a, you know, I'm black. You know, growing right. up myself, and the images of beauty all around you in the magazines, in the books, on television everywhere is, uh, you know, of somebody else. And when I taught uh, young students in first grade and they would draw themselves, this was in Ocean Hill, Brownsville, in Brooklyn, you know, black kids, black and Puerto Rican kids, mm -hmm. Latino kids, and they all drew themselves as blonde hair and blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Really? Yeah, Shamika Franklin. I mean, you know, I definitely understand where they're coming from. I mean, being a young woman, we were just talking about this, 
the first time that I ever really felt like I knew who I who I was as African American woman was when I actually went to college and took an African American literature class. But it wasn't until I went to college and was a freshman in college that I really, really got a chance to know about my culture and, and my history and really have a sense of who I am. So I definitely understand what those young girls are coming from. And I teach as well in the school system. So I, I see how they feel. Yeah. How they don't feel like they belong to anything and how they're yearning for that. So I think that they and a lot of other young women can relate to Pacola's story. Absolutely. And Steve Cisneros, producing artistic director, co-founder of the Phantom uh, Projects early at the age of 17. You're not a black woman. Right? <laughs> Correct. Yes. <laughs> For our radio listeners out there, yeah, that is confirmed. That is that is confirmed. So, uh, why why is this particular project? I mean, tell us a, a bit about Phantom Projects, and and um, you know, this is an example of the kind of work that you do. Absolutely, you know, we try to choose pieces of theater that really inspire, that motivate our viewers, um, regardless of where they come from. And I, as a as a male Hispanic, you know, who <laughs> whose whose issues aren't that separate from Pacola in a sense, and we were talking about earlier with the cast that. This theme is for everybody. Uh, everybody looks at something and has the blue eye syndrome. We all look at ourselves and we have something we think would make our life better. If I just had this, if I only could get this, um, people would see me different. I'd see myself differently at that point. And so the bluest eye, when we tried to get the rights to the show many years ago, and it was still a brand new play and had some difficulty getting the rights to it, and we finally secured it, we just felt like it was a perfect match for Phantom Projects because we've always made a very uh, strong point to find works that everyone can relate to, it's accessible to everybody. And, and yes, Pecola and the family, they are an African-American family, but they just happen to be a story about a family that is African American. Anybody else can relate to this project, and the show is universal. It is absolutely. I universal. mean, you know, you got white folks going out and, and getting the what do you call it? The lens, the contact lens, sure. so they'll have uh, blue eye. I mean, everybody has something about themselves absolutely. that they don't like, and they you know, they they want something else. And uh, Jeanette uh, can um, tell us, you know, just a little bit about the role of of Mama. Well. This mama is, uh, she is basically, she's the matriarch. She is stern, but she's stern because she wants to protect her daughters in the 1940s. And unfortunately, sometimes women are just, we're targets. And so she wants to protect her children. And it may come across that she just is angry and bitter, but she's not. She's that way because she understands the world that her young black daughters are going to be going into. So she does what needs to be done to make sure that they have as much education about the world that they live in and are even also comfortable in their own skins. This woman loves so big and so hard, and her children then understand her and her ways. And I know the funny thing is my mama is exactly like that and has been. So this is what this character is, is about. And I think, you know, also the reason why Pacola clings to these two young people um, and to this family that she goes to visit and live with for some time. Right. And uh, Shamika, Mrs. Breedlove, just very briefly, we just got a few minutes. Um, Mrs. Greelove is a uh, very conflicted, a character like we all are, so complex. Um, the thing that I, I really try to focus on is that I didn't want Mrs. Greelove because I don't think that she um, dislikes her daughters. I think that Mrs. Greelove has issues with herself, and she dislikes herself. Um, and she has, more than anybody, been trapped in this world of what is beautiful and what is not. She wants to go to the movie. She wants to look like Jean Harlow. Mm, mm, mm. You know, and then she, you. right. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on that note, uh, Steve Zisneros, you've got this poor uh, little girl, 11 year old, Pecola uh, Breed Love. She wants to be loved. She's ridiculed in school, you know, for, you know, her, her, her looks. And Steve Cisneros, where can people go to see this adaptation of Pulitzer and Nobel Prize winning novelist Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye adapted to play? Well, we open tomorrow, April 8th, at the Miles Memorial Playhouse in Santa Monica. We run for 16 performances only through April 24th, and they can get tickets at our website at phantomprojects.com. Um, they can also call the box office and get tickets as well, but it's all on the website. But 16 performances only, so it's not right. A very could long could run. you give that website again? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, www.phantomprojects.com, and all the information is on there as far as... And the as phone number for sure. people who are not online. Absolutely, they can call us at 714-690-2900. 
Well, it the, the entire production just sounds as though it's entirely fascinating.